Oh my God, I'm still feeling the sting of an early morning. Johnny, I know on Saturdays you have to wake up super early for your job, but it's the weekend. Why should I have to accommodate for a Princeton game that starts 9.30 a.m. our time? Well, um, I hate to break it to you, Jersey guy, but they're playing at lunchtime tomorrow our time, and uh, you're about to lose an hour of sleep tonight. For the love of God, would they get rid of that already? Everybody's hands go up, way up, as the Nashville Predators defeat the Columbus Blue Jackets by a final score of 2-1 Saturday afternoon in Columbus, Ohio, inside Nationwide Arena. It wasn't easy for the boys in this game. I can't fault them that much at all. Coach Andrew Burnett, Bruno, had a completely different lineup to work with because of the NHL trade deadline today. Columbus goalie Tarasov made 47 saves, making this a hard two points earned by the Preds. But fortunately, in their favor, Kevin Lankinen, who hadn't played in almost two weeks, was in for relieving you see Saros, who will get the start on Sunday, I am sure. He made 32 saves. Luke Evangelista scored the eventual game-winning goal. The Preds have extended their point streak to 11 straight games. They've won 10 of 11 and 11 of their last 14 games. Former Pred Matthew Olivier trips down Cole Smith early into this one, but I wasn't expecting very much out of the Preds' power play that quick, considering that the Preds roster is considering this 11.30 mental clock start. What was nice to see though, even though the Preds didn't score on a power play, was Coach Bruno test driving new acquisitions on that first power play. You had Jason Zucker out there wearing Billy Peltonton's old number 16 and Anthony Bevilliers was out there wearing Tom Fitzgerald's old number 21. The Nashville Predators were dominating the shot clock in this one as they registered the first 14 shots on Columbus netminder Daniel Tarasov. The Blue Jackets were getting nothing on Lank and you want to see him tested, but the Preds stayed thorough and consistent. And finally, 12 minutes into the game, Preds break out 2 on 1. You've got Keith Sherwood with Cole Smith. Keith Sherwood just inside the blue line. Decides to keep it, snipes it, pass, tears off, it goes in. The Preds have that all important opening lead up 1 0. And if you missed it, Preds Nation, that is Keith or Sherwood's first career NHL goal against the team that he grew up rooting for in their building. <sighs> the Blue Jackets finally record their first couple of shots on Lankin, and so he doesn't go totally ice cold in the last quarter or so of the first period. First period eventually comes to an end. The Preds thoroughly dominated the Blue Jackets in that period, out shooting them 19 to 9. But unfortunately, where it counts, they only lead 1 0 after the first period. Columbus appears like they're finally ready for a battle early in that second period as they put Lankinen to the test and he's up for it and denies their early opportunity. Remember folks, this is Kevin Lankinen's first start in almost two weeks. So you want to see him get tested because he might be a little cold. Almost 90 seconds into the second period, Forsberg in the Blue Jackets zone gets a cross ice pass to a wide open Ryan O'Reilly who gets a shot off and tears off for the Blue Jackets, robs the Preds again. Almost two minutes into the second period though, in the Preds defensive zone, Luke Shen, back clear, is unable to get it out. Provolov for the Blue Jackets, keeps it in on the blue line, takes a shot and it's tipped in as Shen cannot battle against Alexander Texier. It goes in past Lankinen, and this game is all square at one. Just over five minutes into the second period, Columbus is now really ratcheting up the pressure. Amazingly, to that point in the game, I wasn't keeping track, but it was pointed out to me by Bowie Sports, Willie, and Seamace, that Columbus has now hit their fourth post of the game. This could have put the Preds in a massive hole against the Blue Jackets of all teams. I'm sure during a TV timeout, Lankinen touched these posts. It's like, thanks guys for having my back. But the halfway mark of the second period, off of a Preds offensive zone faceoff, puck comes 
to the right point at the blue line. Alexander Carrier takes a shot. And oh, 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 that looked like it hurt. It hit Anthony Bavilli on the way there. And he goes down for a moment. Luckily, it hit him in the back of the head. He'll have a bruise tonight, tomorrow, for a little bit. But he played through it. And I'm sure, if not on the bench, by the second intermission back in the locker room, Carrier to Bavilli is like... Welcome to the Preds. I owe you one, buddy. Sorry about that. Shortly after that woozy, Roman Yossi is forced to take a holding call against Chinikov, putting the Blue Jackets on the power play. But during that power play, just about eight minutes left to go in the second period, Colton Sissons has a great chance to give the Preds back the lead on a shorthanded breakaway, but he's denied by Tarasov. What's it going to take to beat this guy? Just under six minutes left to go in the middle frame. Blue Jackets in the attacking zone of the Preds again. Puck comes in the air and somehow, somehow it goes in past Lankin. Such a weird goal. Credit to Boom Jenner, the Blue Jackets captain. Blue Jackets are ahead 2-1. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Almost immediately. The refs want to review. The Preds don't need to. To challenge because the initial call was a high stick they go and look and yes boom jenner got the blade of his stick on the puck above the crossbar as it went in it was the right call the goal is waved off we're still square at one well jackets fans what's fair is fair Preds got a goal waved off for almost the exact same situation against Montreal on Tuesday, and now it's your turn. Preds under some duress during the latter moments of the second period. Nothing like they had experienced in the first. Definitely a lot more. Preds get a power play. Boom, Jenner, who got the goal waved off. It's like, okay, let me try this. And he goes in on a shorthanded breakaway while the Preds are on a power play, but Lankinen denies him. Horn sounds. Second intermission is upon us. Preds only able to outshoot the Blue Jackets 16 of 13 in that middle frame. This game still tied at one. That power play that carried over from late in the second period into the early parts of the third period results in a close call by Tommy Novak to try and give the Preds the lead. Preds need to dig deep and find that second gear that will result in that second goal that they need to get the crucial two points in this game. Refs miss an obvious high stick penalty infraction committed against Alexander Carrier early in the third. But finally, Preds Nation's prayers would be answered just about four minutes into the third period. Mark Janikowski from the Preds defensive zone lobs it out of their zone. And Luke Evangelist takes almost the exact same path that Keith Sherwood did in the first period. The Preds have a two on one and Luke comes down and decides, hey, let me try the same thing. He keeps it, he snaps it, it appears to go off of Tarasov who can't corral it and in the net, the Preds have the lead once again. That's Evangelista's 13th goal of the season. Can you believe it? That's his ninth goal on the road as Vincenzo gives the Preds that crucial 2 1 lead. Can they hang on to it this time? It's amazing how well Luke Evangelista has been playing this year in a supporting role. He has taken far strides to improve his game and it's promising moving forward for this franchise as that guy really grows into his role and potentially a first liner in a season or two. Over seven minutes into the final frame, Alexander Carey hooks down Matthew Olivier and the Blue Jackets aren't really a threat through the majority of that power play until the final moments but the Preds successfully kill it off. Last half of the third period now. Impressively, even though they only have two goals to short for it, Preds well over 40 shots on goal. Preds clogging up the neutral zone very well with about seven minutes left to go in regulation, not giving the Blue Jackets an inch. Texier is in Kevin Lankinen's 
kitchen with about six minutes left to go and Lankin gets bowled over. The Preds kind of pushed him in there, but Tex A really didn't fight it either. So there's no call and we play on. Last quarter of regulation, we work down to under two minutes when the Blue Jackets pull Terrace off for the extra attacker. Lankin makes a great crucial save with about 90 seconds left to go in regulation. Then, I didn't see this live, but I heard about it on Pred's Twitter, and once I saw the replay of the game that I dvr I still can't understand it. Somebody please explain to me what Alexander Carey was thinking with 50 seconds left to go in regulation. Yeah, he didn't have a wide open look, but he had a pretty good look with some Blue Jackets defenders around him. Nobody really to pass to. They're in the Blue Jackets zone inside the blue line. Why the heck isn't Carrier shooting it at the empty net to put this game away and allow Preds Nation to breathe a little easier? He dropped past it like he was thinking that there was going to be a better wide open lane and it could have cost the Preds with an odd man rush the other way for the Blue Jackets. Thankfully, it didn't. Carrier, when you see a chance like that and that gaping net looking at you like a deer in the headlights, just shoot it in! Blue Jackets come the other way under 25 seconds. They're in the Preds zone. And the clock stops at 16 seconds or so left to go in regulation as Kevin Lagan makes the biggest pad save I think I've seen him make in two seasons with the Preds robbing Johnny Goodrow in front. And then the cherry on top in this game. One last defensive zone faceoff. One by the Preds. Puck comes behind the Preds net. Jeremy is on and just like, oh, I think I'll just lean against the boards here and pin the puck and melt that clock down. Tick, 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 tick. Horn sounds. Preds win. Two, one. They don't ask you how many sometimes, just if you won. Thank you, Jeremy. I could kiss you. And the Preds walk off with the great two points on this back-to-back -back that they will need as they will have only one day off before a crucial game on the road tomorrow. Preds inching closer, having now recorded a point in 11 straight games, a crucial two-point regulation win, getting a little bit closer to stamping their spring playoff ticket. That was a lot closer game than any of us were probably expecting or would have liked to, to have been. Fortunately, they got the two points. It was a regulation win because you never know. Every two points, especially under regulation wins, might be a factor come April on the last day of the regular season, either making the playoffs, Preds looking more and more comfortable like they will, and you know, playoff positioning will be an exciting factor in tiebreakers for regulation wins, then regulation overtime wins, and then that freaking gimmick called a shootout. As for the out-of-town scoreboard, teams behind the Preds in the standings who have games in hand lost big, giving the Preds a huge boost of confidence as they step closer to a playoff spot. The Flames lost big in Florida, and the Blues lost big in New York. Right now, Detroit is losing to Vegas. If they come back to win that game, that would be a nice cherry on the cake exclamation point to end this great day. And hey, if it makes any of you also smile, the Milwaukee Admirals snapped their four game losing streak and got back to their winning ways that we know they're capable of. Back to the Preds, they will have no rest as they head to St. Paul to play the Minnesota Wild Sunday afternoon for a matinee fair there as well. The Minnesota Wild should not be considered out of the playoff hunt despite moves they made on Friday at the trade deadline. So UC Charles, who you can expect to be back between the pipes for the Preds, will have to be big to keep this ball rolling. But after you get done with Minnesota, you can breathe a little easier because over the next eight days after tomorrow, the Preds will only have to play twice. A nice break in the midst of still having, after today, 17 games left to go in the season. Use that rest of those two games in eight days to heal up any injuries that may be lingering throughout the team, even though they may not be obvious to us. So that's it for this video. 
Thank you very much for watching as always. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. You can find my social media where you can interact with me during every Prince game by clicking on a channel name. Tell all your friends about Prudemption and this run that the Preds are on right now just confirms the notion that you have to be lucky to be good and good to be lucky indeed sometimes.